Hi everybody, welcome back again on this channel. In this beautiful day, we will present about classroom dynamics. Okay, we are the second group and the first material will present by Niputu Yoni Serlina. The second material will present by Niketuta Stadin Sedewi. And the last material will present by Putri Laksmi Mirananta Socha. Okay, if you have any question or misunderstanding, you can put your question on the comment box below. And now let's start it. Classroom dynamic. Have you ever heard that what is classroom dynamic? I will give a um, definition about classroom dynamic. Classroom dynamic involves the interaction between students and teachers in the classroom community. The purpose of studying classroom dynamic is to learn how to set up a positive classroom atmosphere where students feel comfortable learning and communicating with others and with the teacher. Good classroom dynamics consists in the age and judgment of everybody in the classroom. This is not a completely natural situation, so it must be set up according to a plan. The first one is motivation. Some students are not naturally motivated to learn within the constraints of the classroom. Every classroom must out of necessity have slightly different dynamics because they all consist of different students. Second one is gender. Some classes isolate, embrace, or exclude a particular gender from the classroom by the activities or by the discussion. For instance, a medical student named Julia Witzer was listening to a lecture on the muscles construction of uterus and then addressed a classroom saying, You may never fail this, but your wife will. The teacher was isolating half of her class who were women by addressing the men in the class. The male gender is similarly isolated or excluded in the classroom. Proper classroom dynamics will include both gender and be mindful of their different needs. The third one is a participation. Good classroom dynamics will include all students in its activities and discussions. Teachers must, know, must uh, show an interest in every individual student and encourage her to participate in the classroom. Classroom participation is not However, only about the student. And the fourth is a discipline. Every classroom needs a behavioral code to maintain others. Students will never feel, never feel uh, comfortable to express themselves in, in the classroom without rules. Teacher should inform students from the beginning of the class what their behavioral expectation are for them. It helps if they also have a discussion to get a feedback from the student about the rules and to clarify any conclusions. When a student breaks a rule, it is important that the teacher follow through with the predetermined consequences. Classroom dynamic. Have you ever heard about classroom dynamic? I hope yes. Classroom dynamic is an effect of interaction. Interaction is a sequence of individual actions that are modified subsequent to the action of others. Interaction can be conceptualized as a complex system that is an agent-based, non-linear and path-dependent. Individual agents have the capacity to act independently and based on their own choice. In the classroom context, interaction takes place between teacher and student. In this context, 
individual action are delimited by the roles of the teacher and the student that create specific expectation and restrict independence and choice. Role dependency of student and teacher reflects in classroom communication, where a student answer to the question of the teacher has to meet expectation of both the teacher and the peer audience. Interaction between individuals is non-linear because it is based on interpretations. Teacher and student act on their interpretation of the action of others. Interpretation, uh, interaction can be conceptualized as a complex system that, uh, that is a agent that is non-linear and path-dependent. Teacher and student are on their interpretation of the act of others. Every interpretation is continuous, meaning that it is not true or false, but merely plausible. Since interpretation of both individuals are continuous, Niklas Lipman and Karl Skorl introduced the concept of double continuity in instruction of frame its dynamics. The quality of teaching relies on reducing continuity by developing plausible interpretation of student action. When students struggle to accomplish a task in class, teachers have to interpret student action in respect to the task in order to support their learning. Interaction in path dependent since inter interaction of student and teacher are not only affected by the current situation, but also by their history of interaction. The knowledge constructed in previous interaction creates a cognitive horizon in relation to which interpretation of current interaction are developing. This horizon develops from both individual experience and collective cultural belief and might be biased interpretation. Teachers who consider the math ability of their female student to be lower than of their male student, even when the test scores are comparable, are likely to act upon such as bias. Okay, the next material is about technology and classroom dynamics. To reduce the complexity of classroom interaction, the student population has to be small and students should have more or less homogeneous performance. However, teachers often have to work with large classes and with students of different performance levels. This situation makes it difficult to address individual learning requirements. And at the same time, teachers are requested to meet curricular requirements that demand teachers to take control of events, uh, such as requirements facilitated technological teaching and learning. A technological view replaces complex relationships of interaction with casual relationship. Learning in school becomes a technology in terms of content, time, and in respect to its social function. Contents of learning in school are predetermined in curricular that disregard students' interests. Time of learning in school is structured in lesson plans and leaves little time to respect individual learning requirements. The social function of teaching and learning is to produce individuals the, that social society calls for. Individuals that display social desired character traits and are skilled in specific uh, subject areas. In contrast to the conceptual framing of teaching and learning as a complex system like I've presented before, this critical technological framing highlights one of the fundamental contradictions of classroom interaction. On the one hand, teachers have to 
Millage Classroom Dynamics as if teaching and learning had a technological relation. And then, on the other hand, teaching and learning interaction has been uh, characterized as complex, contingent, and nonlinear. These characteristics point to fundamental problems of a technological framing of teaching and learning. The theorem of double contingency emphasizes the necessity of mutual interpretation of actions to reduce contingency. It equally underpins that intentions of teaching and intention of learning have to be negotiated to arrive at interaction productive of for learning. Ultimately, the theorem of double contingency renders the technological expectation that actions of teaching will cause actions of learning unrealistic. My name is Putri Lakshmi Miranda Socha and I will explain about dynamics among teaching, learning, and education. Classroom interaction is dedicated to teaching and learning, which can be understood as impartment and acquisition of knowledge in the context of sociology of knowledge. In respect to impartment and acquisition of knowledge, the teacher operates as an agent between students and the topic and acts as a negotiator of knowledge. In class, the teacher elicits and negotiates concepts related to the topic with students. Teachers have to link their actions of imparting knowledge to student actions of acquiring knowledge to create dynamics in interaction that scaffold learning. Insufficient dynamic scaffolding is revealed through phenomena such as student boredom, a signifier of the individual's retreat from teaching and learning particularly prominent in compulsory education. To help students become engaged in working on a topic, learning about it, and acquiring knowledge, Teacher actions reach beyond teaching subject and imparting knowledge. As the social role of the teacher is to help students work on a topic, teachers have to educate students. Educative action can be identified by positive and negative moments. Negatively, educative action takes place as inhibiting students from actions other than those aligned with working on the topic. Positively, educative actions aim to guide students to a habitus productive for the acquisition of knowledge. Teachers have to rely on educative actions when interaction on the level of imparting and acquiring knowledge is disturbed, or a shared focus on collaborative work is not found. Classroom interaction is framed by institutional and social demands, but nevertheless produces interactive in order in respect to acquiring and imparting knowledge. The order of classroom interaction is not sustained by normative consensus, but rather by individuals who cooperate to sustain a course of, a course of events and patterns of interaction. Classroom interaction cannot be used as a means to realize institutional demands, but depends on at least minimal commitment of students. To bridge commitment, teachers and students communicate about learning in class. Interaction on the level of imparting and acquiring knowledge depends on coming to a situated understanding of students and teacher that something is learned. Learning is identified through mutual understanding that state changes from not knowing to knowing. If this understanding is not reached in different stages of classroom interaction, teaching and learning cannot proceed. Without communication of learning in the classroom, attempts to have an effect of learning through teaching stand no chains.
situated interpretation of actions in the classroom and reactions that connect to these actions are key to handling classroom dynamics and enabling students to acquire knowledge through interactions. That's all about my material and thank you.